Generic greetings and welcome back once again to Airships Conquer the Skies, where in the previous episode we got a bit of territory, although it wasn't without some casualties. We managed to make very good progress in the southwest here and got all the way down to pretty much the very bottom. There's only Tepid Falls there that is remaining to be felled. And then obviously we have this sort of island nation on the right hand side and a tiny, tiny little outpost on the left hand side, which we'll be dealing with, well, pretty much right now. As you can see, we have the Oxfords, which I think on balance are probably the best ships we've designed in a long time followed by a New York as well going to deal with that. It's pretty much a clean up episode this one and should be probably the last one of the series unless something goes horribly wrong obviously can't discount that happening but in reality with only three major cities remaining and us controlling all of this we simply have the economic advantage but anyway we will unpause it and crack on what I actually want to do is go to this large shipyard here actually and go to build a land ship and we're going to build a catastrophe in fact we're going to build a couple of these catastrophes three of in fact because they just might be quite useful for some of these bigger areas the problem that we face is that these can only really attack this, this, and this, because all of these here are an island, which you can get across. These lines here indicate the areas of travel, so like a ferry port type thing, but you can't assault through it, I don't think, so... We'll just have to see how that goes. So this is going to be uh, the fight on the left-hand side. So this is versus his last remaining bastion, which it's very, very small. We've got the small defensive structure on the right-hand side. And then this sort of mini tank type thing, which looks fairly cool. But anyway, we'll just press start here and we'll let it crack on. I'm going to go to probably... Um a target ship and I'm going to target it's not really a ship I'm going to target the right hand side there because as you can see this thing if we even went to a, <laughs> went to a, try and board this thing it probably wouldn't be alive by the time we get there because a lot of the shots are just carving it to bits I'm just going to press M on these and flip them around because as I said I want to get rid of that as soon as possible it's actually trying to move to the left hand side but as you can see we've managed to destroy all motive systems on it so it can't even drive anymore and there is a very easy victory we're going to do a gentle takeover there and then finally we'll invade this last little bit that they have and we'll press start and probably win immediately although no they do have some more things so i'm just pausing a second going over to the left hand side and then do a little bit of cheeky boarding We'll board the one at the back because, quite frankly, I fear that the one at the front will be destroyed in very short order anyway. You can see we've got some planes that have launched and are going to strafe all of these. Sadly, they have rifles, they have some Gatling guns and a bit of... Uh, actually, no, they don't have flak, but they have the deck guns and stuff. So they have been destroyed very, very quickly. Here comes our aerial... Don't you say that one there? Here comes our aerial hussars who are shooting this as they go past, but they're also getting hit a lot by the by the miniguns and such but they have managed to get into position and there's only a couple of things that can now take them out but yeah there's not much damage that they're causing at least we're still bringing the suspendium cannons along for the ride i mean this york actually is this a new york yes it's the new york it's not really been designed to take out anything like the static structure it's more of an anti-fleet thing especially like a especially any fleet that's like high level service ceiling type stuff because you can use the hazards to go and uh, deal with those but anyway our main obviously advantage is these oxfords which i think are a very 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 good design we're going to move them further forward there and you can see the damage on them is absolutely immense. Most of the weapons have been destroyed on this front one, if not all. If the ones that are still remaining, yeah, there is a couple remaining, but they're just out of ammo. So it will give up eventually, but I think it'll be destroyed before then, and that should be pretty much it. The damage that these cause, absolutely immense. I don't know whether making a bigger rear ship would be uh, the way forward. We're going to go for a gentle takeover there, and then this one we can see we'll now be able to bring down. I'm going to bring it down to Tepid Falls to, to deal with that one there. I'm going to go and check out, where would it be? We've got the repairing of the Watchman and the Archer over there. On this side we have, I'm going to select those and move them over there just to split this fleet up. This is the Cormorant followed by the Royal Oak, which is one of the ships or some of the ships from the uh, people down south here. I'm going to send spies to all of their major cities because we want to see what they are like and what defences they have. They currently don't have any fleet so I'm going to take this opportunity. There's our research complete shaped hulls. That gives us extra bonus on the armour there. We'll have a quick look. We've got steel armour weight. There's shaped hulls that we've got. We've got the selective up armouring. We've also got armour piercing rounds and 
things like that. I think we'll go with probably we've got arm piercing rounds, 50% Gatling gun and rifle damage, or Gatling gun and rifle aim and clip. We're going to go with. Uh, oh, we've actually already selected one of those. So, what should we go for instead? Extra torpedo damage. I don't think we've actually built anything with torpedoes. Oh, we actually have a fleet coming in as well. So, that is coming up towards this area in four. We will obviously be able to defend against that. I'm going to actually use their ships to do just that. All of these have now been built and upgraded and repaired. Let's go to build ship. And I'm going to see if there's anything that we can possibly make. I think a couple of barries would be in order because these are armed with Gatling guns and that's something that we are lacking in a couple of areas. This is our main assault force which are currently sitting up here. I'm going to keep them there because I do need to repair the winter and also the owl. This is the last fight down the bottom and it'll be over, <laughs> it'll be over probably very quickly. You can see that they are versing these well, this tower here, and it's just down with flak. That's all it's got. So all of the planes that are going to go over, if they just waited, which we don't have an option for, they would have been able to destroy that in quite short order. But it looks like, sadly, they have charged in, although they have lost all but one of their flak guns. So by the time the aerial hazards get in there, they might be able to do a lot of damage, and that is going to be the case. As you can see, they're now in, and they will be able to start to fight, and uh, look like it's already over with anyway. So that's going to be a gentle takeover. So that is every single empire other than the very southern one now removed from play. Let's go to View City and we can see that they do have some things here which we can if we want to do destroy. No, that didn't actually work. Uh, we'll have to send another spy there. View this city. We can see that they have more stuff. I'm going to remove anything. Oh, no, sadly that didn't work and uh, they got captured as well. So they must have a quite a high rating there for their spy, uh, spy master stuff let's go for destroying that one there and it did actually destroy it successfully which is excellent anyway we've got a couple of barriers getting built over there we do have uh, that's what's that that's uh, repairing the raging fortress these are all getting taken over that's sorted there obviously there's a lot of things like the clockwork wasps and the dragons and stuff that we haven't taken out but realistically at this stage we're not going to uh, the watchman is repaired as is the rest of the stuff so we've just got these small areas down here I don't really want to put the Oxfords and this fleet in together because it's quite a quite a small one. I'm going to actually move these guys down to Kudair and then now that this all walk's been repaired, I will repair, sorry, captured, will repair the couple of ships, the Winter and the, uh, the other one as well. And there's another fleet coming in, which is, once again, it's really, really slow, so it's not something we really have to worry about. In fact, not something we have to worry about at all. If we go to build ship once again, we could build, we've just, we've got a couple of Denvers in here, we haven't got any cranes because that's just all about the harpoon guns, although building a crane would not be a bad idea because it will be able to fire the harpoon straight away and grab onto that, so maybe we should give that one a little bit of a go. People have requested that we build the Excalibur as well, because it would be quite fun. Uh, and I agree, it would actually be quite fun to build the Excalibur. So I think that's probably what we'll end up doing. I'm just going to try and get all of these fleets together. And as you can see, they are now heading over to this area, which I will then... I will not move down any... I, think, I don't think I'll move anything down at the moment. I don't think there's any real cause for that one. What I will do, though, is start to invade down to the south here with these guys, with the hulls and the marksmans and the heralds and such, and the watchmen, which is a design that we've nicked from them, <laughs> and it's actually, it's very difficult to look at. It's got some sort of, like, urban camo thing going on, but... It is also very, very, very good. So one structure there, one static structure that I will probably reserve the hulls. There's no point in having them in play. We'll probably put these down the bottom like so. I like the way that we've got a lot of these. I mean, this is this fleet here is 100% nicked. <laughs> All, all of this is something that we have captured from previous uh, previous games. So, yeah, I think what this one was one of the first ones that we captured, followed by that one, then this one, then the one on the right-hand side. So, there you go. That's going to be a gentle take over there. And I'm not going to do any more boarding actions because I want to, I want to, you know, move them uh, in different ways. I'm going to charge down to Hummerbund to stop this fleet attacking, and it'll probably turn around as soon as we get there, and that's exactly what's happened. We also have another one. Oh, there was another one coming, but it is given up. It, it uh, decided that it would not be a good idea. So we're going to put this fleet in Cuthredale over to Kudair, and authorities... Oh, and oh, look, I have a caption, foreign agent attempting to set fire. So they are actually doing some... 
they are actually doing some espionage. I mean, we could go for... Uh, if we put it on, we're currently on lax for the secret police. Medium will actually give us a lot less money. It's, we're currently getting 868 generic units of currency, but sadly, it, putting it up will pretty much half that. Anyway, I'm looking around. I can see large shipyard, huge shipyard. I'm looking for any other shipyards. No, I think it's going to be pretty much this shipyard where we have to start to crack on and build some of the bigger things. Let's move these fleets together. I want to do that. I want to just swap these around so then we can set assaulting Dragon Bridge and Axis Mundi on the right hand side. Deal with those first. And looks like we now have also the crane and we'll move that there and we can see that actually the crane is quite fast so that should be able to stick with that one. We have extra ammo storage or ammo storage flammability which we have went for so that is fine. We've got cannons no longer explode, we've got sailor maintenance cost reduction. I'm going to go with rock, uh, rapid fire rockets. Not that I think we'll ever see it because we haven't built anything with rockets although we could probably change that. In fact. I think we can change that because we've got the Coventry and the Excalibur both with both with rockets on the front if we go to build ship and Excalibur. We can't afford it just yet but it has got some massive rockets on there and the Coventry has also got some smaller ones. So what I'll do on the right hand side, build ship, I will build a Coventry and that will obviously uh, take a little bit of time to build. Uh, Tepid Falls is partially recovered from that which is fine. I mean we could invade over here but oh there's another fleet coming in and yeah the, the speed doesn't really fill me with any great trepidation I must confess anyway let's invade over at Dragon Bridge with our uh, with our ground forces which includes three catastrophes two winters an acne carry and the owl which quite frankly I'm very tempted to get rid of it's on the same it's the same design as this thing here so it's got that sort of uh, black gray and brown urban camo type stuff going on but yeah i'm just going to intercept this here because we might as well this one has also now decided to attack as well but that shouldn't be too much problem they are actually attacking this thing i will go to build ship and we will build the excalibur and there we go that's now cracking on not a relatively new design quite an old one in fact but it's not something we use in anger at all really in terms of other things that we could possibly build obviously we've got the coventry getting built there We've got build ship. We've got the the uh, the Berlin, which is a flamethrower. We've got the basics and the barriers. We've tried those previously, all the basics, and we've done in, in fact we've done a full series on it, which is why I've been purposely staying away from them. We haven't went with the mobile mini wall or spike because they are terrible in everywhere. Rampage is also on that same level. We've seen the rock tosser. The sandwich is a slightly different version to the other one. The sterling is a bit like the Barry, but the difference between it is that it's got loads of Gatling guns on the front rather than the Barry which is just got loads and loads of grape shot cannons in fact it's it's pretty much a thing that you put front and centre to take out any aircraft the Sunderland is just a carrying thing Testington is just that it was just me messing around putting some sponsors and stuff and then there's other stuff like the unassailable that we don't actually have access to because we haven't got moon fragment chambers in terms of ground ships then if we go to land ships we can see we've got adjuster which is just this was a test to see if the targeting thing on the game was a bit dodgy which uh well results vary and all that um but it's uh, the, the jury's still out on that one this this little bomber tank here is actually quite small it's got like four uh, five bombers on it in total but it's as you can see it's just a sort of flat plane there the corrector and the encroacher we haven't got the acid spitter so we can't build those the mini tankington is a great thing but not something we want to go for this uh, shell armor is not available because we have to defeat some of the turtles and i don't think i've seen them on the on the map the leads we could probably go for same as like these mini bomber tanks and the mini hussars but a lot of them are just not that good at uh well pretty much anything and we've already got that sort of filled that gap filled anyway so we'll unpause it we'll let the we'll let this um interception happen and there we go so we are versing these two here so what i'm going to do is move a couple of these barries out of the way for now and we'll bring these back like so because i want to try and grapple one of them now i know that this one right in front of us because we've seen it before is actually in itself it's got some mech spiders on it so what i'm doing is i'm moving these two barries sorry these two denvers just above because i want to initiate boarding on my own vessel i'll also put the two barries back here to 
inevitably chase these down when they drop. So I'll start the fight and immediately say this one, harpoon that. So there goes the harpoons and that will now drag it in. And then I'll say, because we're getting boarding, boarded here, I will say, uh, board the... Oh, that's interesting. It's went to here and then it's jumped down to this one. So we can see that's all kinds of bad. Let me get out of the way quickly because that's about to, yeah, lose it lose its suspendium, which is exactly what's happened. I'm going to say ram over to the right-hand side because the reason why these things are so effective, or one of the reasons why they're so effective, is because they have a very big engine for its size. They're not, you know, co comparatively anyway. And, oh, and there's a miss drop, and we've just managed to kill the majority of the boarders, which is a bit of a shame. We have managed to capture this thing on the top here, which is fine. I'm going to move these berries in and we're just going to see how much damage that these can cause. Obviously we are still trying to board this thing here but when we get the berries in you'll notice that there's just going to be a lot of damage. No you won't notice that because we actually successfully captured it. So there is a decent interception. We're going to now move over to there and actually no we will I guess fight this one at the bottom. So this is where we have <laughs> that's cool. So it's got like a big cannon the front there and that's pretty much it I have a feeling though that what will happen is as soon as we start the fight it'll give up and I really don't want that so I'm actually going to reserve a lot of these uh, things so there we go we'll start that we'll move these over to the right hand side because I want to get these uh, used in anger so as you can see we've got three of these catastrophes which are armed with the only thing they're armed with we've got um, it's a bit of a mixed bag, actually. They've got the spikes on the bottom, which is mainly to get rid of trees that you ram into on the way. This is actually a perfect time to use it because it's nice and flat. I've just heard a horrible noise. It sounds like something's broken on the window, but it wasn't. We've also got the saw blades on it, and we've got three harpoon launchers. So what we do is we go to tether at, and then we say tether it, and then as we get closer, what will happen is it'll fire these tethers and then it'll pull itself into it. Not only will that cause some ramming damage, it'll also get that saw in play and I'm pretty confident that if that actually grappled on the first place, which it didn't, that saw would be nice and um, in play to absolutely annihilate that thing. You see we've charged right forward and there we go. That's why these things are actually not as bad as you would expect. <laughs> <laughs> it does that little hop and absolutely annihilated it. So we'll save victory there. We're going to do a gentle takeover and then we'll send that to invade them. And as we can see, we've got this other force that's coming along. The problem is that we are really, really slow now because we've got the Drake and the other things in place. So I'm going to select or rather deselect all of the Denvers, like so, then I will say move over to there, and that's the older fleet that's moving, sorry, hang on, that's the, that fleet needs to move to there, and that fleet needs to intercept them, and, oh, can we not do that? I don't think we can. Why are they really, really slow? The Barry is, it should be all right. There we go, now we can intercept. So this shouldn't be too much of a problem, and there we go, we've got another one of these suspendium things, so... I will move these guys back over. You can see we've actually got one of these Denvers in reserve simply because it's ran out of a... Well, it's got no suspendium chamber. Actually, no, that might be coal, so I think it's just currently in tow or something. Anyway, so we'll put these in like so, move them a little bit further forward, and we'll start the fight, and immediately I'll tell this one to tether, and we'll fire those tethers off, and as you can see, we've managed to grapple pretty successfully. We'll move these over to the right-hand side. Um, this thing is actually quite a lumbering beast, so it looks like it is successfully managing to uh, pull this thing. Although if I tell it to say ram back, we'll say, there we go, now it's starting to move. It's not able to, yeah, pull the other way, so that's fine. That should be a decent takeover. A lot of these things that they're sending, they're actually decently armed and armoured, but they've got no protection against boarding, which is obviously the main problem with them and uh, there you go the rapid is actually that it is actually quite rapid surprisingly we do have now have a coventry which is good i will actually move it to there in fact you know what i'm going to do i'm going to get rid of some of these vessels this is another fight a ground fight i will reserve a lot of these ships because we want to try and take it out with these catastrophes a lot of the catastrophes though sadly will not make it in fact if if the, any of them make it i will actually be surprised the problem is that we have is that we have to go through all of these trees and yeah we'll have to see how we get on there you can see we have got the winter at the back which is uh, a little bit too far back so i will make sure it's on aim fire and then keep going forward i'm going to keep issuing orders to move uh, it's still issued in order to move to the right and it's just managing to get through 
These ones have stopped, so I will issue an order for them to go. The reason why I didn't do all three is because what happens is this one will, this one is a little bit slow because it's having to chew through all of this stuff here. And Oh, there we go. There's the grapple. The grapple has been engaged. So what will happen is we're going to ramp off. We're going to ramp off and assault this thing. So here we go, and it will... There we are. Didn't ramp off, but it, uh, it's close. So it's got right in play here, and it is now absolutely chewing through every single bit on this on this structure and we pretty much carved the remainder of it out. I'm going to issue an order to go forward there and we're just going to basically stand on top of it and just cut it up to shreds and from the back now you can see we have got the other catastrophes coming in and they will actually grapple on and start to push this other one forcing its <laughs> blades further down and that once again is a gentle takeover and sadly we can no longer go anywhere else that's as far as we can get with those so quite fun to use them but we're not going to be able to get any further there i'm going to get rid of these royal oaks and some of these other ships that like the drakes and stuff we're just going to get rid all they're doing is costing us more money money that we really don't want to spend and we really don't need to spend so i will uh where's this one where they're coming over here we've got another f another fight and they are coming down the bottom okay so what i'll do is i'll scrap some of these ones that is okay i will repair the ship there and there should be another denver to repair there it is yeah it shouldn't take too long because it's quite uh, quite an easy one and the excalibur as you can see is only about maybe an eighth of the way built but we do have now the coventry which i can move up actually the coventry is not that fast which is a shame so i will move it back once this is repaired i will intercept and you'll be able to see just how quick this thing is where it's going to intercept probably around about this mark here the coventry i think we will probably double up let's go to build ship and we'll build some more coventries and we'll build probably three of them in total so that should be quite a decent one there. I'm also going to max speed out because I want to basically get this I want to basically get this Excalibur built and it's uh, going to take far too long otherwise although what we could probably do is just continue invading with some of the other ones and then the last fight is the one that we send the uh, the Excalibur on. So there we go there is another fight and now that this is all repaired it should be a simple matter of start and this is quite a small vessel so harpooning it like so uh, will be quite successful. Yeah in fact it's grabbed onto it. It can't really go very far it's actually swinging around it tried to move but it's, it's swung all the way around it and because these are now all collapsing into one another all that's going to happen is when I issue boarding instead of these trying to jump out of the sky and go all over the place they have managed to jump from one ship to the next to the next and uh, doing that quite organically which is quite good and there is a capture although it's causing lots of damage because it's ramming in to things all over the place but that is um, a decent one there and what we're going to do is issue a move back to there because we can and on the way I will go ahead and find the marksman and I'm going to I was going to say destroy it but sadly we have got another fight here which is probably not going to take too long in fact that's a victory gentle takeover we're going to get rid of that marksman because we're that's far too slow and then we'll invade this other area which i didn't actually check out i've got the people here but we haven't actually got any uh yeah we haven't actually got any view on it we've got spies i just didn't check it so as you can see we now have three static structures and this is actually a much better fight than i would have expected so we have uh several different things to fight the problem is that this one is armed with miniguns at the back so all of our all of these guys who are coming along they're now shooting and doing a lot of damage and they've actually just taken that turret out so well done them but they are going to get absolutely chewed to bits by that gatling gun there which is why i focused fire with the 10 oxfords to try and get that destroyed and looks like that has actually successfully worked and i think we have a little bit more to take out there as you can see we've got a couple of shots whizzing out but i don't believe that's a lot of damage these aerial hazards are actually very, very effective. I just realised there's a rifle on this, so I'll deal with that one. The aerial hazards are very, very effective, but they're also very, very weak. Very exposed if they don't have uh, the anti-air weapon removed from the opponents. But once you've done that, I mean, they just they cause quite a bit of damage. But they are, but they are quite vulnerable at the same time as well. Looks like we've got multiple explosions can hardly see exactly what's going on but it's multiple explosions and all of these and that is another Vic and Terry and there we go we'll take that over we will not continue on with that assault instead what we'll do is take our 
quite slow moving stuff here. There's the rapid fire rockets there, which is something I'll try. We've got flamethrower range and flamethrower direct damage. I'll go for flamethrower. Uh, we've actually got with flamethrower damage, haven't we? No, range went with range. Um, I don't think there's much we can really research now. And if there is, I don't really know what that would be. So that is about right. I won't put any research in the queue there. Okay, so that's fine. We will head up to the top. We can see that we have the Coventry. Another one has just been built, which I'll move those together. Excalibur is getting close to being built. So we're getting close to halfway being built. I will wait for these Coventries to crack on. As you can see, we are moving, trying to take one back, and then we'll take this one. And then the other areas, what we'll do is we'll send the Excalibur to deal with that last one. And let's start this fight here immediately, and it's victorious straight away. And we can see rockets are coming back at us, but it's not going to matter. That's a gentle takeover. As I said, this is, after all, simply a cleanup. And, oh, perfect. We now have the option to use some of our ships in anger that we don't normally... Uh, get to use and what I mean by that is we have the ability to use these things which will be able to fire their oh let's not put them there because they won't be able to maneuver properly so they'll be at the fire if I move them over to there you can see the holes are going to move and they will be able to go underneath and there is the aerial charges out and the thing about these aerial charges is they are pretty much useless um, <laughs> unless you have a ship like this which is slow moving and very ponderous and the amount of damage they cause is unbelievable the problem is also the design see this one blows up and then it chains so that's actually a problem we've experienced previously so once this starts to go up they have the death star problem is this, they just chain react and then that's it, the whole thing goes. So it doesn't matter how good the design would be, it just gets destroyed like that. Which is <laughs> a fairly big flaw and something that we've never really been able to mitigate. I mean, we could probably do that if we put in some like um, some gaps in it. You know, have like say fire break type things. We could have fire doors between them. We could check out the explosion distance, but I really don't know uh, what the what the overall like salute up resolution would be to it. Anyway, we're going to move those back, and as you can see, we've got on the hull, there's no weapons on the hull at all, which is just crazy. We'll move back over to the closest shipyard, which is on the left there. You can see we do have all of these guys just sort of waiting, just in wait, trying to figure out where to go. That's now back at base, and we will naturally repair both of the hulls hull, and we will unpause it there. So we have got two Coventries, uh, four Coventries in total, so we'll move those down, and it looks like the fast, but it's actually because we're on max speed, and then we're going to go down to Pith, and we'll take out these two areas here. In terms of cash, we're on 27,000, uh, 28,000 now, and it's just going up and up and up, and we could, if we wanted to, build ship and build another Excalibur, although I think what we'll do instead is, what else could we make? We've built hmm, all manner of things, but realistically, is there anything more we could make? The Necrosis wasn't too bad. We'll have a couple of those. It's just because a lot of the aircraft were overpointed that, although technically they might be all right on paper, it just didn't seem to work out for us. So this is our Coventries, which will start the fight, and there goes a huge salvo of rockets. Oh, that looks cool! Wow, that, <laughs> that looks deadly! That looks absolutely deadly! So these Coventries are armed with just standard rocket launchers which are unguided, fire and forget, you know, they just go. But if we zoom in, you can see they've got this dual setup. So there's actually four of them instead of one of them now. You've got that. So when we start the fight, they just let rip with all of these torpedoes. Uh, so with all of these and <laughs> absolutely carpet the area. That is brutal. There's so much damage. I mean, not in the right place, but I mean, there's so much damage. I'm going to go to uh, aimed fire thing is, we won't necessarily be able to win because we can't take out the main source of damage that we are receiving, which is these uh, triplanes. Although we do have a cannon on the bottom there. Um, we're still moving forward. We can see that, oh yeah, we've lost one of the Coventries. That's blowing up left, right, centre. We've got Suspendium flying out the top. We've got all manner of bricks. And yeah, I mean, does it really matter? But I mean, that is just epic. <laughs> They're just targeting. 
like central mass and just launching all of these torpedoes and the damage it causes crazy. I don't know whether this is the best uh, upgrade that you could have got. There was either these ones or I think it was accuracy or you fire four, something like that. Either way, the other one's going to have to be pretty special for me not to choose it because, yeah, as you can see, this is just really cool to look at. I mean, strangely, we're not going to win the fight by the look of it because we're just not doing enough damage. But the amount of chaos and confusion we're going to cause is, I think, worth it. And it just looks epic just seeing them shots whiz off. You can see the damage that we've sustained a lot of it is from those biplanes, that we, uh, sorry, triplanes that we can't take out. We still have a cannon on the bottom, but they don't have the ability to target the target doors there. In terms of our ammo, what we're like, we are, we're only about halfway on the ammo, so they have a fairly decent capacity. I mean, to be fair, we are on aim fire anyway. I'm actually going to move up like so, because I want to go up and over this and get a lot closer. So we'll do that, and then we will move forward like so. Now, this could be a bit of a problem. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, I don't have any portion on the back of this, and we'll be able to push it, but we just rammed into it, and, um, well, we're pushing along quite nicely, as you can see. And, oh, as soon as we get close, you can tell where you've got the maximum accurate range thing, and you can see that, um, yeah, well, on aim fire, that's just carved a huge hole in the ground with the mine shaft with missiles. I mean, quantity is a quality in itself, right? <laughs> just the, I like when you get, just get within that accurate range, you can see the focus fire. But the thing is, we zoom right in, it's actually not doing much damage, because they're very well armoured. So, we're causing a lot of explosion damage, but we'll be absorbing most of this, because we've got no piercing damage. So, I mean... We are chipping away, don't get me wrong, but it's going to take some time. I mean, I can't imagine there's any crew on board that hasn't got a concussion. Uh, let's go for a brutal takeover on that, because that's a, a big city that I want to uh, that I want to use to repair. And let's repair those Coventries. And then build Coventry. Hmm... Let's build three, and over here, we're going to build three, yeah, three, and then, where's the biggest shipyard around here, there's a large, medium, small, hmm, let's go for the it's already getting used. Small. Who would have thought we'd run out of shipyards? Okay, so that's the Coventries getting built. We could probably build some more, but we're not. Uh, we'll wait until the rest are sorted. In terms of the stuff, I mean, th this is over with. We, we knew that this was pretty much the case from the beginning of, well, mid-ground of the last episode. So this is just about, you know, finishing up and cleaning up and having a bit of fun here. But, in terms of what we've been using, the whole idea of the series was to use the ships that we've been designing on and off through the several standalone videos. Um, some of them are old designs, so the Coventry and the... Coventry and where is it? The Denvers and the Barrys are quite old designs. The Crane is a relatively new one. It is not a sensible design, but it is quite fun. It looks like we have the Excalibur ready to undertake a bit of an invasion on the right hand side there. And yeah, we've built, like say, a lot of... Oh, and the Necrosis is, I think, a relatively new-ish one. But we've been using them for the most part. Well, we've been using a lot of these where we can. So things like the Catastrophes genuinely thought... I'll build some of them because people have asked and they're not going to be that good. But we've seen on the the two assaults that they made, they did an immense amount of damage. We were very fortunate, admittedly, because the ground was relatively flat, level grade, with very few trees and foliage things around, so that was fine. The Winters have nothing but good things to say about them. They've not put a foot wrong. Can't knock them at all. This owl is something that we nick. And the Aknakari has been very successful 
in the bits that have worked out for it, the, the, basically it's been a bit of a hit and miss affair. You know, when it's worked, it's worked very, very well. When it hasn't, well, hmm, not so much. All of these Heralds and the Watchmen, these are all stuff we nicked. The hulls, we have used those in anger, but in reality, you know, they're just a joke ship. And it's worked out sometimes when we've used them, they've caused a lot of confusion. But there you are, there's another, there's a Necrosis there, we're going to move this over. So we have got the Excalibur going over to Urswig, and this is going to be, well, if you look at definition of overkill, uh, we can see that the the Excalibur, it's, I think it's the biggest ship that I've made, and certainly one of the most expensive, 16,000 to build. It's armed in no particular order other than front to back. Uh, a large flamethrower and two of the very large rockets. Going along the spine of it are grand keels, I think they are, to make sure that it doesn't snap in half. We've got all of these aerial hazards in multiple bays along that spine. On the top we have uh, two biplanes and three bombers. On the bottom four, we've got three of these large cannons followed by two torpedoes. On the top, we have one, two, three, four Gatling guns and two flak cannons. We also have a spotter there to increase accuracy. We have, this is a telescope, we have a guy up the top there on the crow's nest to increase accuracy, a computer in the centre to increase accuracy further, and one, two, three, four of the extra large suspendium chambers followed by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven smaller ones down the bottom. We've also got a lot of complement of troops and fire points and fire doors and just everything you could possibly imagine. It's not the quickest machine, but it's also, believe it or not, not one of the slowest as well, which is an interesting thing. Either way, we're going to move it down to there. I'm going to press start, and they're immediately going to give up. Yeah, that's a shame. That's a shame. There is the shots out, and we'll see what may have happened if this hits. Ah, oh, it's not going to hit. We'll just have to do a brutal takeover. I'm not going to use it to take out the last one because that's going to be the Coventry's job. I want to see what happens when we send however many Coventry's this is towards that last bit. The last fight is going to be the Excalibur's fight, which seems a bit... It seems a bit dodgy coming in to steal thunder at the last minute, but it's, you know, nothing exceeds like excess. And, oh my good grief. And that is... Yeah, it's like that scene from 300. Um, let's do a brutal takeover. And then finally, the last fight probably of the game, we can see, oh, it might be a fairly pitch battle. We have the Excalibur versus one, two, three, four, five structures. We might not be able to win this. We'll just have to see how we go. So I've issued an order to attack on the front here, and I will actually say... Once we're done, move forward. You can see that we're actually losing crew quite at a quite rapid rate, but also they're losing their structure at quite a rapid rate. Also, one of the problems with the Excalibur, and it's actually one of the problems with all big ships in the game, is that unless you have a lot of command, it does take quite a while to issue orders. So I've now issued an order to move forward. You can see it looks like it's on fire, but that's not. That's just the furious heat of all of these suspendium chambers. It's trying to stay aloft, but it's not really getting there. It's slowly dipping down. We are going forward, and we're getting within flamethrower range, but also there's the rockets as well. So we've got flamethrowers, we've got the very large rockets, and we've also got the shots and the torpedoes from there as well. We have now lost part of the front of the ship, which is always a problem with these extra large rockets, but it does seem to have... Uh, managed to do a fair bit of damage. I can't actually go any further down because as you can see, oh, it doesn't matter, that's fine. I wanted to go a little bit further down to take out those weapons there, but because of the design where it's going further down there, we really can. Looks like we've got some shots as well from these miniguns that are strafing on these little sections here. We also have, because this is after all a carrier, um, a heavily armed carrier, I'll give you that, but it is a carrier, we've got a lot of these ones like docking up to then repair them. And the advantage that we've had is that out of most of the fights that we've seen, we've not really had any great success because they've got a lot of flak or a lot of gatling. Now, they do have those, or had those, but the initial volley and the advantage of having a fairly armed carrier is that you can get all the shots out and do a fair amount of damage. Now, this is a 16,000 generic units of currency ship. And, well, realistically, <laughs> we could face off against a lot more. But, the problem is if it falls out the sky. But it didn't, and that's a victory. 
that has been a bit of Airships Conquer the Skies, a mini-series as we pointed out at the start of this entire endeavour. The object was to use a lot of the designs that we have made in these standalone episodes, some of which were quite useless, some of which were actually pretty good. Um, looking at the hull and the winter, <laughs> um, respectively. But we've used a lot of the ships that we have designed separately in anger and seeing what they were like. Overall, very much enjoyed that one. Didn't build and make any alterations because the idea was to try and use them as we as we originally designed them. A couple of things we didn't make because we knew they were just silly. Things like the ship with the huge amount of um, ammo stores on the front and things like that and the, and the really tall thing that was just there to absorb shots. Those were just joke ones, more exploitation of unintended game mechanics rather than a quirky design. There's a difference between the two. But either way, that has been a fairly decent fight. Everything was on normal and standard when it comes to difficulty and settings, apart from technology, which gives us access to everything because then we could then make all of things for the most part that we wanted. Some of the other quirky ones, like the Leapers, where they have harpoon guns and... Um like a it's a shell armor we couldn't do because we didn't take out things like the well, i don't think there's actually any on here there's some turtles and stuff you can take out to get that shell armor you have got shell walkers but you don't get them off that this just reduce your income you also got dragons and things which we didn't face i thought that you know it would be long enough to do the rest of it oh and there's also some cultists over on the left hand side which is cool either way i hope you have enjoyed the video and this series overall if you would like to see more of this sort of thing then by all means let me know in the comments i'm obviously going to be giving it a little bit of a break until we do the next one if you have any designs for changes for the um uh, any, well, any designs or any comments for changes that we could implement to any of these then by all means let us know as well <laughs> thanks very much for watching take care and generic partings <laughs>